So now we are happy to have uh, Scott Darnison, who will be telling us about discrete bug reconstruction. Okay, well, uh, uh, thank, thank you. you for uh, having me here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm uh, um, uh, from UT. I'm uh, on leave this year working at OpenAI, although, as you can see, I am still interested in uh, quantum things. Uh, this is joint work with uh, my uh, postdoc, Jason Polak, who is uh, there. Should mention uh, Jason is uh, on the job market this year. Uh, uh, he, but he, he is the one who told who taught me uh, much of the background to this talk. And uh, any questions that I can't answer, I will probably fob off to him. Uh, so, um, okay. So, what are our goals uh, in this work? Uh, um, so, we are interested in what is the computational complexity of the ADS CFT dictionary. Okay. So. Uh, you know, given uh, uh, entropies, let's say, uh, uh, of various subregions on a boundary, you know, in principle, those ought to determine a bulk geometry. Uh, uh, how hard is it to actually determine that bulk geometry? Okay, can it be done in polynomial time? You know, under what circumstances can it be done? Okay. Um, and, and you could say even more broadly, uh, we would like to sort of uh, reformulate, you know, the, you know, that question in a, in, a, in a language where computer scientists like me can think about it. Uh, uh, you know, sort of, uh, uh, sort of extract some, you know, core of the question that is, uh, 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 you know, statable in a, in a, uh, uh, a more or less self-contained way. Uh, I should mention, uh, you know, I, I'm almost certain that there is some connection between what we do and, uh, and the work that uh, uh, Tamara just uh, uh, spoke about, which I only just learned about from her talk. Uh, and uh, maybe we can figure out uh, uh, later this afternoon what, uh, what uh, those connections are. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, one uh, starting point, at least uh, for us, uh, would be the uh, much discussed uh, results from uh, three years ago by um, uh, Adam Boland, uh, Bill Pfefferman, and Umesh Fazarani. And, uh, you know, with uh, uh, later uh, follow ups by, by Lenny Susskind. Um, and and so, so, in some sense, you know, they have given evidence that, that there are situations where the ADS CFT dictionary can be exponentially complex. Okay, so uh, in, particu uh, in particular, uh, they say that uh, you know, if you are interested in reconstructing bulk geometry inside of an event horizon, okay, so for example, if you would like to know the volume of a wormhole, you know, uh, 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 you know, in the thermofield double state, or if you would uh, uh, like to know, uh, uh, you know, what were the effects of uh, some shock waves, or you know, how many shock waves were sent uh, from the from the boundary, or questions like that. Uh, uh, if uh, um, you were trying to answer that, given only the boundary data, uh, you would be faced with a, a problem uh, involving a, a seemingly pseudo random quantum states. Okay, you would have to distinguish, let's say, pseudo random, you know, n qubit states from har random states. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, uh, do something that is uh, uh, information theoretically is possible, but is conjectured to uh, plausibly conjectured to require exponential time. Uh, however, if you were a bulk observer uh, and you were willing to uh, die for the knowledge, you know, to jump into the event horizon, then uh, um, uh, uh, at least, uh, 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 you know, uh, um, maybe even if not one such observer, but at least multiple such observers by combining their experiences could, uh, could know, you know, what is the volume of the wormhole, you know, the bulk dual would be, would be uh, somehow much, much more efficient to, to, to calculate. Uh, so, um, uh, so, so, you know, this is, this, th th this was a, a very, very striking observation to me. And, you know, to me, it, it uh, immediately raises a much broader question, which is, you know, do, it, 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 should we think of this as a challenge to the quantum extended church Turing thesis, which would basically just be the statement that any realistic physical system can be efficiently simulated, uh, at least by a quantum computer. Okay, and uh, you know because you know they are saying that the there are situations where the ADS-CFT dictionary uh, should not be efficiently calculable, even with a quantum computer. Uh, you know, unless quantum computers can break these these uh, pseudo-random constructions. 
Okay, but uh, uh, I, I should say that, that to me, you know, even even if so, it is not at all clear that that that, that this does overturn the quantum extended church Turing thesis, as I would understand it. Uh, the reason being that uh, you know the 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 boundary to bulk dictionary is not obviously a thing that we as observers have access to. After all, you know, we presumably live in the bulk, right? Uh, we do not live on the boundary. Okay, and so if you try to think about how to operationalize this uh, uh, to actually see the answer to an exponentially hard problem, you end up talking about things like, well, maybe first we could upload our own brains to computer simulations, and then we could put ourselves into a simulated CFT, which would then have a, a, a bulk dual in which you know, our simulated doppelganger would see the answer to the hard problem, okay? I don't know about you. There is a part of me that feels like this should not count as a, as a counterexample to the extended church touring thesis. Okay, but uh, maybe we can, we can discuss that later. Okay, but now uh, in, in, in this work, uh, we're going to take a, a different tack. Uh, we're going to ask, well, uh, uh, you know, how important is it that we're actually interested in observables that are behind an event horizon? So uh, if, if uh, the geometry of the bulk were much simpler, for example, it didn't involve event horizons, then would the ADS CFT dictionary be efficient? You know, would it be computable in polynomial time in that case? You know, and, um, you know, I, I, you know, asked around uh, in, in recent years and various people told me morally they believe the answer is yes, but, you know, uh, uh, can one actually show that? So, you know, we are not able to resolve that question, but we were able to make some progress on it, uh, uh, resolve a sort of a, a special case uh, um, uh, you know, involving one boundary dimension, uh, you know, within a, a discretized version of ADS CFT. Uh, so, um, so our, th our basic theorem uh, uh, says the following. It says, suppose that we consider the special case of a single one dimensional boundary, you know, the uh, two dimensional bulk. Uh, and suppose that I treat the boundary as divided up into N discrete regions, let's say. And now suppose that the input data that I am given uh, is the entropies of the contiguous subregions uh, on the boundary. So for example, the entropy of A and of B and of C and of so forth, but also of AB and of BC and of CD uh, or CDE, but not the entropy of a region of like the union of D and F because that would not be contiguous. Okay, so, so I'm given that data and I assume that it satisfies a, a known inequality that you know, boundary data has to satisfy called strong subadditivity, which will, uh, for those who don't know it, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to. Uh, then uh, what, what we show is that for any such data, one can construct a graph model of the bulk. Okay, the model uh, looks like this uh, here. Uh, you know, we called it a, a, a diamond work. Uh, it actually, you know, looks uh, uh, um, not, not completely dissimilar from some of the diagrams in, 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 in Tamara's talk. Um, uh, but uh, uh, so, so some interesting features of it. First of all, we can construct this graph in linear time. Okay, so, you know, as, as efficiently as you could possibly hope for, given the, uh, the, the input uh, data, uh, the graph is planar. Okay, so, you know, which seems important if you want to interpret it as a discrete model of a two, you know, a two dimensional surface or like a two, uh, yes. Linear in the amount of input data, which is n squared in this case. Good. Yeah, yeah, so that, that's the thing like it, in computer science, if you're given a graph as input, for example, you're allowed, you know, linear time would mean n squared time because that's how much input you have. Okay. Uh, good, uh, you know, it's also how much output we have to produce, uh, in fact. Uh, and, and the model is universal in the sense that the graph will always look like this. Uh, the only thing that depends on the specific uh, uh, input entropies is the weights of the edges, right? So we basically just have to solve for the weights of the edges and uh, we, uh, we show that that can be done, okay? And the graph uh, has, uh, uh, you know, is computable in n squared time and it has, order n squared vertices and edges, which is you know, the, the information theoretic minimum, 
You know, it, it has to have that many just to encode all of the boundary data. Um, no, in, in general, you know, there would, even, even if you didn't, you would need n squared edges uh, just, just to, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you would, I mean, certainly in any case, you would need n squared edges in order to, to uh, okay, to, to, to encode uh, all, all of the data from the input. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, well, I mean, this, this is just sort of the way that it was drawn. I mean, one can, you know, in general, it will be continued, sorry. Uh, it'll, it, it's going to be continued further and further, you know, into the, the bulk uh, for, for uh, um, order n over two layers, if there are n uh, regions on the boundary, right? So, so yeah, and then there, there will, you know, there will, there will be a hole in the middle, right? Where you can, you can actually put whatever you like in that hole, it won't really matter, okay? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, okay, so, you know, one way to think about what we're doing is, you know, we're just being wormhole busters here, okay? And uh, this, is, this is completely unrelated to any other wormhole busting that, you know, I may have been, you know, doing on my blog or, you know, for example, in, you know, response to uh, some, uh, um, um, you know, exaggerated claims uh, that, you know, were reported, but, but uh, okay, but, but in some sense, what we're saying is that, you know, in, in the situation that we have described, right, the, there are not going to be wormholes in the bulk. There will not be, you know, a, you know or, 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 or rather one can always, sat, you know, uh, uh, satisfy the constraints provided by these input entropies of, you know, conti of contiguous data satisfying strong subadditivity via just a planar graph, you know, one that describes a geometry uh, uh, without any uh, 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 wormholes or without anything topologically non-trivial in it. Okay, so that was, um, you know, that, 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 that was something that I, I wasn't sure would be the case going into this, but, 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 but turned out to be. Uh, if you want to force there to be wormholes in the bulk, what you seem to need to do is provide input data about non-contiguous regions. Right, like if I took some non-contiguous region, you know, say a, a and B, A union B, and I said that its entropy is less than the entropy of A plus the entropy of B, then it might be that the only way to satisfy that constraint is to create a wormhole from A to B. Okay, but we're we're only looking at uh, uh, data about about contiguous boundary regions. Okay. So, you know, of course, the, the central tool that we will use is, of course, the Ryu Takianagi or RT formula, which, you know, uh, uh, I'll just uh, uh, briefly uh, remind people uh, uh, what it is. Uh, so, uh, so, so what it says, it, you know, it equates two things. Uh, one of them is, uh, you know, given, so, so given any region uh, 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 on the boundary, uh, which, you know, I'll, I'll call R, you know, there is some uh, reduced density matrix of the quantum state, you know, like the, the, the uh, CFT state, for example, or the, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, state that lives on the boundary. And that, that, uh, 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 that mixed state of this given region R uh, uh, has some von Neumann entropy, which, you know, we can denote S of rho sub R, or for, for simplicity, I'll just write S of R. Okay, I'll just, uh, I'll just omit the rho. Okay, and the RT formula says that that is uh, 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 up to some caveats. That is essentially equal to the length of the shortest geodesic uh, in, in, the, in, in, in this two-dimensional case that uh, uh, separates off R from its complement uh, in the bulk. Okay, or in general, to the area of the minimal surface that separates off R from its complement. Okay, the caveats are, uh, this is up to uh, some scaling factor, which you know, uh, I'm just going to take to be one. And uh, it's also up to some very uh, 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 small corrections that, 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 uh, that, that uh, I'll, I'll just set to be zero that, 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 that we won't concern ourselves with here. Okay, so, so we will just take uh, the, you know, the data uh, you know, the, the, uh, as being data about entropies of various contiguous boundary regions. And we will interpret those as telling us what should be the lengths uh, uh, of the various geodesics uh, uh, in, in the bulk. You know, so, so, so that, that will be the data that we are trying to, to uh, fit. 
so, so now we're going to uh, uh, crucially rely on uh, the uh, um, work by Ning Bao and collaborators from 2015 uh, in their paper called The Holographic Entropy Code. Okay, and what they did was basically said, you know, uh, for, for, for many, many purposes, it suffices to uh, look at a discrete model of the bulk, which is a weighted undirected graph, you know, with some finite number of vertices, okay, uh, such as uh, uh, this one here, right? Every edge has some uh, uh, non-negative real number as, as its weight. Okay, there are certain distinguished vertices in this graph, which correspond to the regions on the boundary. And then there are also interior vertices, these, these black circles here, uh, which you can introduce as many of as you like. Okay, and now here's the key correspondence that they make. They say that uh, uh, in a, a Ryu Takianagi surface, so you know, in this case, a geodesic can be identified with a min cut in this graph. Okay, so a minimum uh, uh, set of edges that separates the region, the, the boundary region that you are interested in from the complementary boundary region. Okay, so let's look at some examples. Okay, so if I ask, like, uh, um, like let's say uh, I'm interested in, in you know, so, so now, now I'm given the graph and now I wanna work out what are the entropies, let's say. So I could ask, what is S of A, right? Uh, what, what is the entropy, you know, the, the entropy of the reduced state of region A? Well, to calculate that, I just look at what is the minimum cut that separates A from B, C, D, and E, right? Well, I could cut these two edges and that would give me a value of four, but I can do better by cutting just this edge and uh, which gives me a value of three. And therefore we say that S of A equals three, okay? Uh, likewise, what if I wanted to cut uh, B, C from its complement, um, D, E, A, right? Well, you know, I could do that by uh, uh, cutting, you know, these two, which would give me a value of six, but now I can do better by going deeper into the bulk, cutting these two, which will give me a value of four, okay? And therefore we say that S of the B, C region is equal to four, okay? So in this way, from the min cuts in this graph, one can read out all of the entropies. Yeah, Raphael. Mm. That's right. And, and so 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 we will be interested in going in the opposite direction, okay? Ah, yes, yes. So yes, so I, I will assume that we are given the entropies, right? And 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 it's a you know, and 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 we heard a talk this morning about how you know, given, you know, um, um, entropy may, may not be feelable in general, right? So it, it could be that if you were given, for example, a quantum circuit to prepare the state, uh, then, you know, getting from that to the entropies could be a hard problem. Let me actually say something broader. You know, ADS-CFT is considered a duality between two things, bulk and boundary, right? But like in, in this context, there are really three things at play, right? There is the quantum state on the boundary, there is the bulk, and then there is the vector of entropies, right? So, and now one can ask about the, the, the computational problem of going from any three of those things to the other two. And as far as I can see, like, like uh, every single one of those arrows is, 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 is interesting, okay? <laughs> yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, 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 that would be true. I mean, there would be, yeah, quant so, so we're interested in a sort of situation of pure geometry. I don't know if Jason wants to say something here, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh, well, I, I, would, I would like to make a start and just see what is efficiently doable, right? So, you know, this is, this is the case that we were able to handle. Uh, uh, and, you know, I will try to explain it to you before, you know, uh, the human lunch and then, you know, and then leave, <laughs> leave, 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 leave the issue of Python's lunch to, uh, to, to follow up research, which, you know, there are, there are so many open problems here and, you know, further directions that one can go. All right, good. So, uh, good. So, um, all right. So, um, and, and was, was, was there anything else? Uh, yes, I mean, we would like it to, to fail in situations where it has to fail. That, that would be, yeah, that, that, that is always a good property for an algorithm to have. Okay, so, um, all right, so, so let, me, let me just formally state the problem that we are trying to solve, okay? So we call it the discrete bulk reconstruction problem or the DBRP. Uh, so you are given, a, you know, here's how I would state it to a computer scientist, let's say. You are given as input n atomic boundary regions, which I'll label by integers from one to n. And then you're given certain, you know, distinguished subsets of those regions. Let's call them R1 up to RK. Okay, you know, in, in general, these might be any subsets of, of those regions. And for each of those uh, uh, special uh, subsets, you are told it's von Neumann entropy, S of R sub I, okay, for each I from, from one to K. Now your task is to find a graph, you know, a weighted undirected graph G, uh, which should have N distinguished boundary vertices uh, labeled one up to N, and which could have some arbitrary number of additional vertices, you know, the interior vertices, okay? And it should have the following property, that for each R sub I, uh, the weight of the minimum cut that separates uh, uh, R sub I from its complement on the boundary. So from sort of, you know, set one, one up to N minus R sub I, uh, the weight of that minimum cut should be exactly S of R sub I. Okay, it should be exactly the, the entropy that you were given. Or, you know, it is, you know, of, of course there might be many different such graphs. If so, you know, it's, it's good enough to find any one of them. Okay, uh, or, or, or there might be no such graph. Of course, if no such graph exists, then you should output that. You should, you should, uh, you should figure that out. Okay, so uh, from a computer science perspective, what is uh, notable about this problem is that, you know, it is sort of the inverse of, you know, one of the most classic problems, right, that, that, that is learned by every undergraduate in, in CS, or at least is supposed to be learned by them, okay, uh, which is uh, that, you know, you are given a, a weighted graph, let's say you are given two vertices, for example, and now you need to calculate the min cut that separates those vertices from each other, right, and there are very famous polynomial time algorithms to solve this problem, starting with, you know, work of Ford and Fulkerson, like 60 years ago, uh, actually just this past year, a linear, a nearly linear time algorithm was discovered for that, for that min cut problem. Okay, so that's, but, you know, for, for, for a very long time, we've known that at least polynomial time algorithms. Uh, and now we are asking for a sort of a, a converse problem that uh, as far, uh, I, I, I don't remember ever seeing in computer science, although maybe someone has studied it, okay, where you are given the values of the min cuts, you know, separating various sets of vertices from one another, and now you are asked to find a graph that could have led to those min cut values, okay? So that's, you know, so, I, so, so that, 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 that is how we think about this. Okay, and you know, and one, once you understand that that is relevant for, you know, bulk reconstruction for ADS-CFT, then, you know, one could just give this problem out to, you know, even to computer scientists who know nothing about quantum gravity and, you know, and see what they can do with it. And that's one thing that I'm excited to do. Yeah. Uh, in general, it will not. I mean, we, we can see that from the fact, for example, you can always add extra vertices that it will just be dummies and that don't really do anything. So, you know, the, the solution will be badly non-unique, right? On the other hand, you know, one could also ask for a graph that has additional properties. So for example, you might say, I want it to have the graph to have as few vertices as possible. I want it to be planar, right? You can start piling on additional properties that you would like. 
Um, you, you know, and, and then of course there is the decision problem, which is simply does such a graph exist or not, which is also interesting to look at. Yeah. Sorry. Well, okay, I mean, I'll, I'll show you our main results, right, where we, we do need to assume strong subadditivity of the input data, if you, you know, we, well, which is not a specifically holographic assumption, right, but we, you know, we make that one assumption, and that is all we need, and, and we do get some of the additional properties, but that's only in this one-dimensional case with contiguous boundary data. I'm very excited to see what can be done in higher dimensional cases and so forth, and where you might have to make extra assumptions. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you could take any of these graphs and you could add wormholes to them, right, without changing the, you know, if, if you don't change the values of any of the min cuts, then it will still be a valid graph, right? So, so we can't say for sure that there are no wormholes. We can just say that there is a solution that has no wormholes. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, so, uh, so let me start with just the, you know, an observation, uh, which was implicit, I think, in the uh, paper by, by Ning Bao et al., which is that you know, at the very least, you know, this discrete bulk reconstruction problem is computable. It does not encode the halting problem or, or anything of that kind. Okay, and that's even in, in the most general case. Okay, and the way that you can see that is, let's say you know, we're given k different boundary regions, uh, then imagine forming every possible intersection of all of those boundary regions, right? So there's up to two to the n different bound, you know, unions of, of these atomic boundary regions. And so they can form two to the two, up to two to the two to the n different intersections, right? So that's a huge number. Okay, but for every possible intersection of, you know, Ryu, Taki, and Agi regions, uh, I, I at most need a single vertex in that region, right? Why? Because if I had more vertices, then I could contract them all to just a single vertex, and that would not affect any of the min cuts. Right, the min cuts are just defined by the RT surfaces, and so they won't be affected by that. Okay, so this gives us a finite upper bound on the number of vertices that we would ever need in any graph solving this problem. Okay, the, the upper bound is two to the two to the n. Okay, but then once we know that, then we can just formulate, you know, now, now we still have to figure out what are the weights of the edges. Okay, but now we can formulate this as a collection as a gigantic collection of linear programming problems, okay, where, uh, uh, you know, for every possibility for what the, the uh, min cuts could be, you know, we try to solve some, some linear equations and inequalities to see, can we set the edge weights so that these will be the min cuts? Okay, this gives us an overall algorithm for deciding any instance of the discrete bulk reconstruction problem whose running time is merely x of x of x of n. So, you know, uh, you know that, that's, a, that's a good start, but, you know, in, in that triplet, well, yeah, yeah, or, or triply exponential in N, right. But, uh, uh, you know, but, but uh, you know, in computer science, if you get that as your first answer, you know, you, you would like to do better, right? So, um, yeah. So, okay, so, so as I said, you know, we will need some entropy inequalities, you know, which were previously known in order to, to ensure that a solution exists at all. Okay, so, uh, so, so what are these inequalities? Well, first of all, you know, every quantum state satisfies this thing called subadditivity, that if I take any two disjoint regions, A and B, entropy of A plus entropy of B is greater than or equal to the entropy of, of their union of A, B. Okay, and then they, every quantum state even satisfies a, a more interesting inequality, called strong subadditivity, or SSA, which says entropy of AB plus entropy of BC is at least the entropy of B plus the entropy of ABC. Okay. Uh, and, and in fact, you know, there are infinitely many more inequalities that are satisfied by all quantum states. The full list of them is not even completely known. Okay? It's not uh, uh, even known if this is a computable problem. 
actually, you know, whether uh, uh, to decide whether a given list of entropies could have arisen from a quantum state. Yeah. Uh, I believe so, yes. Constrained ones? Here, I'll, I'm going to. Oh, oh, for a general. Yes, for yeah. Oh, oh, okay. For holographic states, we know more. I see. So, so there, 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 there could there could be up to infinity more. Uh, but, but, but really, it, 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 is it conjectured that these could be the only ones? Or I mean, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it is. I think. I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think, yeah. Ah. I see. I see. Thank you. Thank you, Ning. So, so yeah. So, 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 uh, I, sh I so so I should add the I add the the phrase up to here and then and then this this becomes accurate. Okay. Uh, now now the you know in the special case of holographic states. So this is not for for all states, but for states that have you know these bulk duals. Uh, well, there's a beautiful way to prove a lot of these inequalities, which I think of as just the the method of cutting and pasting. Okay, which is where you you would say, uh, for example, you know, if I just take a geodesic separating A from its complement and union it with a geodesic separating B from its complement, that is a geodesic, you know, separating AB from, or, you know, that, or sorry, that, 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 that is a surface separating AB from its complement. Just by the triangle inequality, its length is at least the length of, of, uh, of this one, of the minimal one. Okay, likewise for strong subadditivity, if I take this, you know, surface here, and union with this surface here, then I could cut them up and rearrange them to get a, an RT surface for B, which is in red here, plus an RT surface for ABC, which is in blue here, okay, which then proves this inequality for holographic states. Okay, so now uh, holographic quantum states also satisfy additional inequalities, uh, uh, maybe the most basic of which is called the monogamy of mutual information or MMI, and which uh, says this thing here, okay, and here, and you know, it also has a proof by a cutting and pasting, which is here divided into two cases, depending on what the RT surface for AC looks like. Does it look like these two things, or does it look like this thing plus this thing, okay? And either, either way, you can, you can prove this by cutting and pasting, okay? The full list of inequalities for holographic states is, again, not known. But you know, it, it, in this case, it is known that there are infinitely many more, and they form uh, something called the holographic entropy cone, the set of all entropy vectors that would satisfy all of these. Okay, so now what is special about the one-dimensional case? Okay, that, that lets us sort of handle it. Well, first of all, the number of con different contiguous boundary regions is only n choose two. Right, so you know, there's not that much. There, there aren't that many different such regions. Right, you can just count them. You know, the, the things like like the, what, what's in in blue there. Um, uh, why is it not advancing? Ah, so okay, so now we we uh, come to a, a key observation by Bao and by Chatwin Davies, uh, and what they said is that in the one D case. Uh, you know, you can, uh, um, you know, and assuming you can specify uh, uh, all two to the n entropies, you know, including all of the non contiguous ones, purely in terms of the n choose two contiguous entropies. Okay, and there's a combinatorial formula for doing so. So, for example, the entropy of the union of A and C, this and this, is going to be the minimum of two different possibilities. It could be S of A plus S of C, the red lines, or it could be S of B plus S of D, the, the, uh, the, the blue surfaces. You take whichever one is smaller. And in general, if I had a union of K uh, uh, contiguous regions, I would have to do a minimum over K factorial 
different possibilities, but it, it, you get what in computer science is known as just the minimum weight perfect matching problem. And again, it, it is solvable in polynomial time. Um, Uh, yes, 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 you are, yes, yes, sorry, yes, you are assuming that here. You're assuming that the geometry is simple. Sorry, yes, yes, that's right, that's right, that's right, yes. That, that it's simply connected, right. But, you know, since we're just trying to find a solution, we are allowed to assume that, right? So to, to again state our main result, in the special case of a 1D boundary divided into n parts, Given contiguous entropy satisfying strong subadditivity, we can always find a graph model of the bulk in linear time. The graph model is planar and universal and has only O of n squared vertices. Uh, surprising part here is that we only needed strong subadditivity, even though there is this infinite list of additional inequalities, as I said. Okay, so in some sense, we don't need to assume monogamy of mutual information and so forth. Uh, you know, if you just have SSA for the contiguous data, then this Bal Chatwin Davies prescription will ensure that all of the other inequalities are also satisfied for all of the, the non contiguous data. Okay, so, so to just, I guess I have a couple minutes to talk about how we prove this theorem. Uh, so the key lemma that we use involves what we call a bulkless graph. Okay, so we say, suppose you just wanted a a graph model of the bulk that would have no intermediate vertices, no internal vertices at all, just pure edges like this. So it's just a complete graph on my boundary vertices. Okay, and then we say, uh, you can actually find that to explain the contiguous data, right? And, you know, and the cuts will just be the, the only things they could possibly be. You know, there'll be sort of lines like this blue one here. Okay, now, uh, uh, you know, intuitively this makes sense because we have n choose two entropies that we're trying to explain, and we have n choose two edges of this kind, right? So, you know, the, the, the number of parameters works out. Now, the one thing you might worry about is that if I try to solve for what should be the weights on these edges in order to get the correct cut values, then maybe I'm going to get uh, edge weights that are negative. Right, and then, and then this just becomes complete nonsense. Okay, but it turns out that that doesn't happen. And the reason why it doesn't happen is strong subadditivity, right? Strong subadditivity turns out to translate into precisely the fact that when I solve the system of linear equations, I will get weights for these edges, you know, uh, uh, giving me the right cut values, which will all be non-negative, right? And this is just a calculation that you can do. Okay, and so then we, we noticed that, that, you know, almost immediately, this leads to a planar graph model of the bulk. And how do we get that? Well, we just take all of those edges between every pair of, uh, of, of atomic boundary regions. And now if we want a planar graph, I just draw, like, draw it on, you know, like this, and I just put a new edge wherever two of these cores intersect one another. Okay, so this gives me a graph with n to the fourth power, you know, uh, on the order of, uh, of, of vertices. And the edge weights will just be the weights that came from the cores, right? So like along every edge going from A to F, the weight will just be whatever was the weight of the edge from A to F in the original bulkless graph, okay? And if you think about it, uh, the, um, the, 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 min, the min cuts will be exactly the same as they were in the bulkless graph. Right, which means because the bulkless graph satisfied, had the right cut values, this planar graph will have the right values as well. Okay, but this is not optimal, right? This has n to the fourth vertices and edges. Uh, can we get down to n squared? So in order to do that, this is our final construction, which we call the diamond work, okay? And um, so, so you can think of this as just sort of made up of sort of a bunch of overlapping triangles. Uh, one for like, there's a triangle for CD, there's a larger triangle for CE and so forth. And the, and the edge weights are gonna be just the weights that came from our original bulkless graph. And we're just going to sort of add them together sort of uh, um, as we overlap the triangle. So for example, for every, um, 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 edge that comes down from here, I add W sub CE, which is the weight in the bulkless graph for the, the edge connecting C to E. 
for everything coming down from this vertex, I add W sub CF, the weight in the bulkless graph of the edge connecting C to F and so forth. And then I just think about what are my min cuts in this graph. And what I notice is that they have to cut, you know, exactly the same sort of set of triangles that would correspond to that same set of edges in my original bulkless graph, right? Which means that once again, the min cut values will be exactly the same as whatever they were in the bulkless graph. You know, the, and you have to prove this, you know, and you know, prove that there's no better min cut, but you know, that, that, that we do. Okay, so you know, this is what it looks like when, you know, as, as a graph. Uh, you know, some examples, you could, you know, have the edge weights decrease harmonically. This is what was sort of an ADS, a discrete version of the ADS geometry would look like roughly, where the entropy of a region of, uh, sorry, of, of a boundary region of length L would go like the logarithm of L. Uh, another example would be if I set all the edge weights in this diamond work to be the same, to be one, for example. And then uh, this actually corresponds to like a giant uh, degenerate black hole that basically like fills my whole bulk. And you know, and, and my geodesics, my uh, RT surfaces might as well just hug the boundary. They don't get any benefit by penetrating deeper into the bulk. Um, so now we also have a whole part of our paper where we try to generalize this from disks to surfaces with K holes. Uh, this is a, a basically an open problem. Uh, so, you know, since I don't have time, I'll uh, uh, skip the theorems that we're able to prove about this. But, you know, like we could show like there are cases where you can have a graph that's, uh, uh, um, you know, you could have a bulk graph, but not one that is embeddable onto the K hold sphere. We can do that by taking non-planar graphs like K33 and embedding them. We can also show that at least the problem, the embedding problem is in NP, the complexity class. So there, whenever there is an embeddable graph, there is one with at most N to the fourth vertices, even in the case of a K, K different boundaries, so like a K-hold sphere. Okay, this uh, uh, involves the question you may have seen of how many pieces can you cut a cake into by cutting it K times? You know, the answer is about K choose two. Right. So more open problems. Can we generalize to 3D and higher dimensional bulks? Can we include dynamics like the HRT formula? Uh, what's the complexity of the general discrete bulk reconstruction problem? Is it in NP, in P space? Uh, can we go in the other direction as Raphael asked and get the boundary state from the vector of entropies? And uh, a question I really love, does every true holographic entropy inequality have a proof by a cutting and pasting of geodesics? All right, so that's all, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, so. Inverse rate on transform. So, so I'm wondering if there, did you make a connection to that? Uh, I, 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 I think it does, you know, now like we, we tried to look at papers that do this, you know, using the differential geometry and so forth. And, uh, you know, sometimes there, there were additional assumptions in them like symmetry, right? In order to, you know, get the, but, but, but in, in the 1D case, it's possible that what we're doing is just a discrete version of the radon transform, I don't know. Yeah. Uh,